hand this over because what we're going to do today is we're going to do some sanding mostly which is always real interesting and that's a little better I'll probably be making a lot of noise but one of the first things that I wanted to do was I, I had I had done this a couple days ago here in the shop as much as in a in the house when Jan's streaming I've got a few other cores that need to get need to get wound up like I've got a shorter internet cable because I don't need 75 or 150 feet or whatever it is to run it around in there so Hmm. We're dropping them here. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. I'm, I'm checking the feed and see how it's going to go. Okay, we're back at it again. I don't know how the quality is looking. This thing's running, uh, being really bad. I, uh, I'm not sure. It says I'm offline and it shouldn't be. I am streaming as I talk. Okay, there might be a delay or something. Now, according to this, everything is running the way it's supposed to. And I've actually got no drop frames. Hey, what is, what's, hey. I'm running this at laptop speeds. Which is insane. I bet you the delay on this is going to be is going to be crazy. Uh, let me check my channel here. Okay, so it's working. The quality stinks, but at least we're we're up and running. Maybe uh, maybe it'll get better as it goes along. I guess we shall see, or not. Who knows? Let's just keep going and see what's go what happens. Maybe the bit rate will start picking up. I had to drop the bit rate down to nothing. Uh, so we'll do with what we got because we want to make to the streamings and hopefully some of the people will end up showing up and saying hi and bye and all that kind of stuff uh, and we'll do what we can do Everything's working fine on this end. The computer's running good. Everything's going fine. I'm not dropping any frames on that. But I had, on the internet connections were such that I had to drop the frames down to, to like deadbeat crawl, crawl uh, speeds, just so that I can have have stuff going. This is like the fourth time, third or fourth time that I started resetting for anybody that would been watching. So. Uh, We'll see what we can do. Let me know what you think. If you get if it's coming out okay, you know, complain. Could be. Hey Heather, how you doing? Um, uh, yeah, a little bit. I took some pain pills though, so I'm uh, I'm able to talk at least. It's not. I was looking. This is pretty bad. It's like looking in a mirror. Boy, I look like crap. But I was looking over here and. It's not swollen or nothing. It's just sore. 
ever since I had the the chemo, I've been having teeth. I, I had it, bad teeth runs in the family, but ever since I had chemo a couple years ago, all my teeth were, have been moving, and they're like disintegrating. I need to get them all yanked, and uh, one of the days I will. I just I just don't like the idea of having to go back into hospital. I, I'm not a very very pro hospital doctor person anymore because of all that went on. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, how are you today? I hope you got some sleep because, you know, hey, you've been up for quite a while. Last time I talked to you. And I don't know. I keep walking away from this thing. Let me know what you think. I mean, you know, if I'm if I'm falling apart over here, I've actually got stats up and stuff. I'm trying to see what's going on. Man, this thing's running really slow. Uh, this is really weird because some days I can run this thing wide open and it's fine, and the other time I got to drop the bit weight right down to like nothing with really crummy resolution. And the computer's running fine. It's not. It's not missing a beat. Hmm. Oh well. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe we'll get something out and done. Or not. So. I was saying. I think I was saying. Let me see here. Uh. Let's go over here. That's not too bad. It came out pretty good. I've got all these scenes and all this kind of stuff. And oh yeah. Hey, the X Men. Stop. I don't know. He might have it on auto. On, on auto too. How can I help you? We found the. Because sometimes auto. It has an amazing. Auto host will show up as someone watching. A two car garage. But we're just not sure if it fits our budget. Okay, well, let's look at some Oh, the Lark Man. How much you may be able to buy. Wow. Let's make it happen. Sneaky. That's okay. We know you're here. Let's do that. Get a little light in, maybe let a little heat out. Uh, boy, that brightened up the place. Yeah, we're bright and cheery. <coughs> I've got, I moved stuff around it over here back by the air compressor. And I blocked, I blocked my uh, fan. Which you can probably hear in the background. And we'll do that. So now we got a little more airflow. So basically, not a whole lot. It's sand, it's, it's going to be sanding time. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to sand this thing. I don't know how much of it you're going to see. Uh, maybe I can drop this down a little bit, like that. Is that better? Oh man! Uh, that's the wrong one. Uh, wait a minute. I'm trying to see which one I'm working on here. Oh, okay. I see what's wrong. Try that one. That's a little better. I was, I was panicking there. Hopefully you can be able to see something. Who knows? I am pushing liquids. Because it is a little warm in here. And, uh, 
I'm doing my thing. I need a vacuum cleaner to help suck some of the dust out that's already built up in there and whatever's going to build up during the sanding process. With the dust mask that I have, I can't sand and talk at the same time. And I'd rather talk, so... We'll go ahead and start coughing stuff out later. Hopefully the noise won't be too bad. If it's noisy, let me know. Uh, can you guys hear the music? Probably isn't all that great, but... It, I should be able to post this thing back up with it working. Oh, it didn't go on. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Most of the sanding I'm going to do is just is just kind of like utilitarian, so I don't have slivers and stuff like that. Because <laughs> it is a shop machine, a shop piece, so I don't really need uh, to go overboard and you know, get it all smooth and stuff like that. So I'm going to hit it with 80 grit, shape a few of the things, you know, do a little rounding and stuff like that, and just get it to where it's safe to be sticking your hands in there and not worry about you know catching slivers and stuff it's still gonna take a lot because it's a pretty big piece okay I can do that as soon as I find the music How's that? Is that better? It may have take a while to get get over your way. I think there's a big delay. I don't know. Okay, good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let me know if this is no if this is too noisy because I can kill the kill the mic if you want. This way here we can we can talk and sand at the same time. This is probably going to be the worst because I'm sanding into a tunnel. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper, which is pretty aggressive, and I like it for for shaping and knocking stuff down, and then go from there with the finer stuff to go ahead and uh, drop the. Uh, you know, take out all the scratch marks and stuff on a fine piece of furniture. And it really doesn't take as much. You know, you don't have to beat this thing with a dead horse. If you just move the tool slowly across the surface so it's got enough time for the sander to work. And you don't use much pressure. You let the weight of the tool 
allow the sandpaper to vibrate and move back and forth. It knocks it down really quick. Actually, this is a one of my better Harbor Freight purchases. Had it on sale for about thirty dollars, and it's a it's actually a uh, I don't even know call it an oscillating multi tool or something. And what it does. <laughs> you can put different pieces on it, and it will, you can use it as like flush cut saw and a few other things. It works like a scraper. But as a sander, man, it is a cat's meow. It does real good in sanding. This thing came with one of those triangular standing assemblies, and uh, I wore it out already. Fortunately, I was able to find a few more replacement ones, and uh, so I kept it in service. I'm really surprised. I've, been, I've had this thing probably maybe a year. Maybe a little bit longer. And it's still running. And I use it just about every project. And I use it to sand more than any of my other sanders. For finishing work, I prefer a random orbit because that changes the scratch pattern up. And it's easier to, to with subsequent uh, standing. It's easier. It seems to be easier to take down those sa those uh, scratch patterns. And then my final standing, which is usually done with you know like 600, 700 grit. I use a usually use a quarter seat sander. And Try to set it up so that it stands with the with the grain as much as possible, and that pretty makes up for a really nice smooth service. It's actually like overkill on the services. So when I'm doing real nice furniture, I like to have that super smooth feel to it. This stuff here it doesn't matter. I just want to knock down the grain a little bit. I'm not, probably not even going to do the back. The other thing is if there's any any little nails sticking out or something like that, I want to get them done, knocked down. So this way they're not, you're not catching on them. Like this one. Another place that 80 grit is nice. It takes, it'll, it'll go ahead and it'll grind the screws and everything else down.
then we're gonna, I'm gonna round it over a little bit, stand it down and fit the round over where we couldn't get it with the router. Make it a little, little bit closer to even. Kill some of the tear out in it. Go ahead and kind of mess this down a little bit. Give this a little bit of a tamper. So it looks a little bit better. I got a little bit of a ridge in it, that's all right. Got a little tear out over here and want to dress up. Call this power sculpting, huh? Thank you. It's uh, I'm surprised it came out pretty good. It, it it took a little while, a little bit longer probably than was planned, but it just a slap together. I can probably sit down and spend a couple days sanding it down and. Make it good enough to be put in a house. But it's just for the shop, so it doesn't matter. I like the veneering. I, I wish I had enough pieces left over. I might have veneered the whole thing. But since I didn't, just kind of fit it in a little bit. Pieces of this, I think they're a little thicker. I might have gotten away with being able. If I had a fan saw, I might have been able to and cut some veneering out of it. Wait a minute, I didn't catch that. That's okay. I need to drink some coffee anyway. I need to take a break anyway. Tasting flight and experience the range of Starbucks roasts. In every rose, there's so much more to explore. Uh, thanks for the host, uh, Iggy. Uh, you know what? I am... I don't know. It's even on... I even put it on uh, Facebook. But I've been kicking on and off. I had... Uh, this thing forced me... This thing forced me to go down to... Uh, 500 a 500 uh, a 500 meg or whatever it is bit rate wow that was that was fun uh, my bot was telling me X's name complete uh, Pete I'm going, uh, I, uh, I'm just probably going to put a little stain on it to seal it, to keep it from absorbing, uh, excess of moisture, and just leave it like that. Uh, kind of do, like I did, it, 
it'll look kind of like that one. It'll have that kind of color. I can't see it. I don't think you see it too good. Maybe I should put my apron on, shouldn't I? Okay, I'll tell you what. I can show it here. It's good. The uh, it'll be it'll be the color probably around this color here, something like that. Or like that something or something or something cool thank you I appreciate it that's not the one I want that's not the one I want either uh, there we go that'll work a little closer I revamped my cams. <coughs> when we figured out how to get Jan on uh, to run this, and when I did it, it threw the cams around a lot. So I ended up redoing mine. I don't know if you saw, but I re I redid my intro. Hey, let me show that. I'm kind of proud of that one. My voice is going to disappear, but I'll be right back. I kind of thought that that was kind of cool in a geeky kind of way, which I am. And so I figured, hey, why not? What the heck? Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. I thought about putting that as a... Thank you. I, I was thinking about doing something with the beam me up Scotty line somewhere along here on this on on the feed hey eggs I wanted to see you you can see that I put that chat I call it check block thank you I put that check block in uh, I don't know how well it reads or anything like that I don't know how good anything is now I'm, I'm running at such a crappy quality I'm surprised that you can actually see anything. But it's not dropping frames. Yeah, I haven't dropped any frames at all. Um, good. Put this thing down to like 6.30 or something like that. Uh, my, my upload speed this morning was at like uh, 2 megabytes a second. It was like ridiculous. And I don't know why. It's dry, it's hot, it's pretty. Maybe one of the squirrels decided he wanted to pee on one of the one of the wires or something. Who knows? Anyway, hopefully the machine noise won't be too bad. If it is, let me know and I'll I'll, I'll mute it down. I don't know this is it's it's very inc my upload speeds are very inconsistent my download speeds hold pretty well but the upload speeds don't and I don't know why we have talked to our provider I don't know how many times and they're like well they're, they they ping the modem and they say well the modem's fine and everything's cool and yada 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 it's the same scam and I see I'm not the only one that's got this problem there are a lot of people in the neighborhood they actually well they don't know what their upload speeds are because they're not really concerned with that they're more concerned with their download speeds and they complain about that uh, I'm paying for 200 200 megabytes a second and I'm averaging 85 you know it's like well what am I paying for then it's I'm really disgusted with it. 
but it's one of these things we're kind of stuck because I haven't found another provider you know that we can get into you know AT and uh, I was going to go with AT&T and I would have been happy with DSL at this rate but there's so much um, I ain't gonna be able to do that one. There is so much um, activity here and growth that there's like a two or three year waiting list to get on DSL. And for you to guarantee, now this is this is like a year year or two ago. For them to guarantee that you would get on there with that list. They would, uh, you have, you'd have to sign up for dial-up during that time frame. I am not going to deal with dial-up. I've done the dial-up thing too long ago, and I am not doing it again. I bet I'm hollering. Because I'm yelling over the, the noise on this thing. Right now, it's probably the worst. Hey, maybe if I do it this way. This is the day when I wish I was right here. Thank you. Oh, bits. Thank you very much. I got a feeling that I'm going to have to be spending a lot of time on this. Maybe not. At one time I had a little stool that I would set on set down and be able to sand this on the stool and I'll be talking about it, I don't know what happened to it. I'm rounding off the end where the where the router stops. Kind of matching them up a little bit. This tool does real good for that kind of stuff. It does some really good shaping. This is also soft wood. It's pine. Actually, some of this is like fur, and with it being that soft, any grit, you know, I just, you can do all kinds of stuff with 80 grit sandpaper and a, and a sander. This would be, take a little longer with uh, like oak or maple or something, but you can still do it. If I was doing this and making this uh, go in the house or make it, you know, like to be a fine furniture kind of thing, this would kind of be considered your first sanding where you are, you're doing your sculpting and your fitting. If you have any high spots or anything like that, you'd be sanding them down and bringing them in. So that by, by the time you got done with this first sanding, everything would be pretty much smoothed out and fitting good. And then, from there, of course, you end up with, you, you go to your final sanding, which is where you go with the, you know, like, you start out with probably about 100 grit and work your way up to at least 250, 300 grit. Depending on the furniture who was going for and the finish I was putting on it, I, 
I could go up to 600. And it's very time consuming. In some ways. This is what makes the peak. And really it doesn't take. It's really not that tough. Especially if you got like a lot of flat surfaces. Because all it takes is like you just go. If it's, it's relatively smooth and you don't have a whole lot of problems with it. You just roll it along real slow like this. And. It usually takes off. Enough on the first pass. Most people, when they stand, they move too fast. See, and if you just do it slow, even I'm running it a little bit too fast too. It comes off real nice, and with an orbital sander, especially, that's all it takes. <coughs> One, maybe two passes most. the shaping part a few more. Yeah, exactly. And I know it, you know, the, the fine detail and stuff like that is really hard to see in a camera, even with close-up. So, I've got like these little high spots here and there where I didn't put them in, I, I missed, missed the mark. And even when you're right on the money, to, you'll end up with you know, high spots and fit, fitting problems from time to time. So all it takes is just a little bit, a little bit more time, and there it is, flat. Everybody hates sanding, and it's not my most favorite thing in the world, but you can still, and it's still going to take time, but, you know, let the tool do your work for you, so it's not as physical, and, uh, Use a paper, get... Right. But use an aggressive paper to start with. You know, I go down to 40 grit. If you've got pretty good fit and finish and everything, you could probably go to 100. And it won't take off as much wood. But this takes off dirt and pencil marks and everything pretty well. Especially with this softer wood, a couple passes, actually not even a couple passes, usually just one. Sometimes I can work pretty fast, but with this being soft wood and it being 80 grit, I can, I can actually work it a little bit faster than if I had a lighter, lighter grit. Sometimes, sometimes it's a little too aggressive. It depends on the wood. Fur is, like I said, fur is bad. Yellow pine is hard. It's, it's, oh man. Yellow pine is pretty good about it. It's hard enough that you can take, you can do a lot of really nice stuff with it in a sandal. And I really like the way that spalted came out. I don't know if you guys can see it. That is spalted yellow pine. And it was... It 
with waterproof. And the waterproofing is what actually generated the salting out of it. Oh, it was it was soaking wet when I was cutting it. If I was using one of those, uh, oh, what the heck you call them? One of those soft stops, you know, the one that's got the moisture sensor in it. It'd have cost me a couple hundred dollars in, in this stupid piece of uh, sensor. Because every time that you stick a hot dog in there, or finger, or whatever, when it stops, it, it slams it and breaks the drive assembly that's in there. And you have to replace that. Indeed. And it works on, it works on a couple of milli, mi, or micro amps of, uh, of conductivity. It's moisture. It feels the moisture in your hand, or the hot dog got moisture in it, of course. And uh, that's what it senses when it locks that up. So if you have damp wood that's got a little bit of conductivity to it, that book will lock up all the time. And it's a, you know, it's a nice safety feature. But on the same token, if, if you're not paying attention, if you're, you're pushing it so hard and, and not taking the time to uh, keep your hands away from the blade, you need to... You need to stay away from that saw. I'm glad that they didn't make that. That's one of the reasons why I was glad I got the knife saw when I did. Because I'm wondering if it's going to eventually become a law that companies are going to have to come up with some kind of safety deal like that saw stop has. Europe is the one. It's illegal to have a dado blade, to sell dado blades, and I think it's illegal to use them for like industrial places and purposes. Because because there's a, a, a misnomer about them being unsafe. And you know, it's like anything else. It's going to be as safe as the operator, as the operator is going to, going to keep safety in his mind. Sticklers about safety when we work when I work for the county in Florida. You know, chemical safety and just operator safety and all that. And we fabricated most of our equipment. Uh, we had we had these booms on the on the front end of the truck that would aim down and spray chemical larvicides into the ditches. And you know, you would not believe how how much area you can distance an area you can cover with one of those. You know, with a with a chemical with a hundred gallons of, ga of mix of chemical in there, you can kill a lot of mosquitoes in a ditch. So of course, there's a lot of safety stuff you had to worry about too. You know, you didn't want it so you wanted it so that it wouldn't it wouldn't be dripping everywhere and all that kind of stuff. So it, it took a lot of it took a lot of thought to build them, and you know we kept working on them. Every time we get a new truck, there'd be some type of improvement. It was kind of funny. The 
the guy that was our, our manager at the time, he had he had a different attitude about mosquito control than a lot of other people did. And he recognized that mosquito control was a was as much a political thing as it was a health thing. Because you know, if politicians are gonna turn around and give you money, they wanna be, you know, money to to do projects and mosquito control, they wanna get voted again. And if all that you're doing is for just health and health reasons, most people won't even notice uh, won't, won't even notice that you got mosquito control. So we did, we handled and controlled both health and pestiferous. You know, that's like people calling and complaining, I got mosquitoes all over the place over here. So we go and we spray the neighborhood. We had, we had uh, thresholds and traps and everything to test it. So this way we can kind of like be able to spray before somebody, a whole lot of people will call and complain. And it was kind of funny. They went and they started doing this, uh, it's like a, a customer satisfaction survey. And the top three departments for happy happy citizens would fluctuate from month to month, but it was EMS, the police department, hard to believe, and it was also the uh, uh, mosquito control. And so once the the politicians who are to be realize that, you know, there, it was to their advantage, they started to give us a little bit more budget and stuff like that, and we used, you know, we didn't, we didn't play with it, we used it to do, to do mosquito control, well, anyway, the guy that was our director, He had a very good idea about disease about disease control, and, and it's true. Uh, what he says is true. If you're treating for pestiferous mosquitoes, you know, people are calling in, oh, I'm getting bit, oh, this, that, and the other, and your thresholds are to the point, based on your history and everything, to the point that you, you will kill the mosquitoes that are flying before people notice it, and you treat them in the water so this way you don't have to, you, you cut down the amount of pesticide that, that you're putting out in the air because the pesticide that we were using in the water was more environmentally safe. Then, you are also going to be killing the other mosquitoes that are caused diseases because they, they breed in the same spot. And a lot of times the people that are getting, the, the mosquitoes that are attacking them, uh, how can I put it? The people that, the, the mosquitoes that like give West Nile virus, you probably don't know that you've been bitten by it. Because they're very, uh, they're very, they're small. They're, <laughs> they have a very strong anesthetic in their proboscis that they, that they put out. So when they bite you, when, when you finally feel it, that's because they, they've left. And you, you'll be seeing them fly off. Um, what else? And, and they're they're very shy so like if you're moving around and stuff like that they won't land on you or if you look down if they, they they sense that you look down or something like that they're gone so they are the ones that they will attack you when you're like uh, sleeping you know and thanks for the bits Pete I know I it was a while ago but hey I I just got up sit up here and I I wouldn't to say that, uh, oh, okay, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so anyway, by doing it the way that you're doing, that you're controlling pestiferous, you're also control helping the health out. And it was so good, we were so good at it that during the eight years, I was there eight or ten years, during the eight years I was there, we were there when West Nile first came out and all that, and it spread, and we were getting positive. Uh, tests, but we were seeing the West Nile mosquito flying around, 
or West Nile infected mosquito flying around, but we had zero cases. I think we had, in that eight years, we had maybe four horses die. And, you know, that's something to be proud of. And it was a good attitude. We come over here, and Harris County, they have a very strong mosquito control system. But I think more of their stuff is reporting. And Harris County, the county is very, very large. And they only treat when they have like positive pools in the testing. So there are lots of areas that will never see a mosquito spray truck for years. Because just because of the type of mosquitoes that that uh, emerge in that area. Here in Baytown, the mosquito control is political. Yeah, it's the health part is there too, and the health in intention is there, but the idea, which is one of the reasons why I like, I like being here, the idea of being a, to control the posterior mosquitoes, and then in turn, it affecting the, the, the dangerous ones, was great. We had, I was here six or eight years, six or seven years, I forget. And we had two West Nile cases. And we went to research and we found out that one of them picked up West Nile outside of, of the state. And the other one picked up the West Nile outside of the country. But, you know, we still got dinged with it. You know, it's like, well, okay, Baytown had two cases. But, you know, they were like beyond our control. So, that's not bad. That's a pretty good track record. C excuse me. Cause Baytown, Baytown generates a lot of bugs. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of science that goes into that. There's a lot of laws go, that go into it, too. And depending on who's in charge, will affect how the laws go in and how that affects you and your health. You get, uh, you get somebody in there that's, or that's in there that's uh, like a tree hugger type, and they want to ban all pesticides and all that stuff. They'll start putting laws in and stuff to make to make it like super difficult for uh, you know mosquito control people to do their job. You know, uh, if they can't, a lot of times they they get to the point. It's like if they outright regulate something, people will cry foul. But if they make it so hard and so cost, so expensive that the, you can't physically uh, do it, then the programs will stop. And yeah, granted, you know, I don't mean less pesticide and stuff like that is being put out, but it also means that the protection isn't there. And that's the, that's the main main point of doing it. It's for the public health. I don't know how good this is going to go. I'm still experimenting with camera angles. I admit it. I'll be experimenting with camera angles. For the rest of my Twitch rear. No, that's not right. Career at Twitch. How's that? That sounds good. This is interesting music. Real interesting music. Ooh, bugga 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 bugga. So now nobody look at me putting this up because I'm not probably not supposed to be doing this. This board is heavy. Holy buckets. Who built this heavy thing? <coughs> I will say it's solid. Oh. Oh. 
Okay, so let's see here. That's in pretty good shape. Can you see that here? Then we got the, this done. We'll go ahead and take care of the bottom. Really? Your career summary? Yeah, that's kind of hard. Is it the one, is, is, is that the summary that you're doing about what you want to do in the future or what you have done? Because the what you have done part is, it's tough. <laughs> but the best way that I can suggest to do that, that I did it and been, been successful, sit down and I want, and list. List everything. List everything that you've done, Gentlemen, you know, that you know. Penny and find uh, great looks you know, for whether you're in the office like for me, for example, uh, menswear designed by Michael Strahan. I know, I know, uh, Get 50 I know electronics, and dress shirts from I know computers, I know, uh, 40% off um, MSX activewear, also available in big and tall. Don't well, I used to know even more savings with a coupon for $10 off when you spend 25 or more on select items. Oh, That's really? Your pennies worth. Oh, okay. Penny. Then it's what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, I'm... I want to be, you know, yeah, there you go, yeah, right, well, that's cool, you know, that's cool, you, you just mentioned that's a transition, you know, there, there's got to be a lot of the skills that you have now. There's got to be a lot of uh, things that you know and do that you're going to be able to apply to your new job. You know, it's like, well, you know, I'm 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 learning, <laughs> I'm learning here, but you know, I I want to be in this position, and I've got this kind of background that is what made me familiar with it. Uh, let me see now. Uh, what made me what's made me familiar with it and I want to do I'm learning and taking classes and getting the certification needed for this but I need to do it I need hands-on training too to help with the certifications and uh, then you're gonna have to fill in the rest no this is actually part of the resume they uh they change the way you make resumes over the past few years which is really amazing And I wonder who affected that. I bet your businesses did, you know, because they were getting so many resumes and stuff like that. They wanted to read through the stuff, so now they, they hit you, they change it around a little bit to try to get more information out of you. Hey, everybody, how y'all are? My name's Iggy. I'm a wood turner and, a, and I'm a security guy. Hire me. How's that? Hey, uh. My resume wasn't. Everybody said that my resume was impressive, and it's like I didn't I didn't really write all that all that spectacular. I just listed a whole bunch of junk, and but it, it also scared a lot of people. Thanks, Heather. I was I was meaning to ask that. How'd you like her spinner?
That one come out pretty good. Oh, she gave me that that iffy thing, huh? Oh, is the spinner there or did she take it with her? If she took it with her, then it's good enough that she's going to go show it, show it off to everybody. So that's probably a good sign. Because kids usually don't go to... Yeah, see, that's a good sign. Because you know your daughter's not going to go, oh, look at this lame thing that my old man made for me. You know they're not going to say that. They're going to say, see, that's a positive. That Batman one was pretty cool. They're both going to come home with letters about how they got, how they got their fidget thing confiscated. And you're going to have to make another set. Cool, another stream. starting to come out a little bit. The face is starting to round off a little bit, getting a little bit better figure to it. And it's starting to starting to have a little bit of a nice look to it. I better not do a real good job with Jan turn around and say say, oh that's just perfect for, for crafting. I'll take it. That day that I did it, we did it. I didn't do, haven't done anything since the last stream. So that's been what, uh, three, four days, five days ago. And uh, she came in. I was packing up, and she came in and she saw that. And she goes, "Wow, that's a really nice cabinet. Is that is is that going to be my crafting cabinet?" It's like I didn't know that you wanted a crafting cabinet. So I guess I'm going to have to put a crafting cabinet on on a part of my toilet paper list again. And it's scary because after I did the the clamp rack, the clamp rack she thought was cool, and she goes, "Wow, that would be something like that. That was made a little bit more dainty. Would be nice to replace." We've got a uh, a knickknack rack that's that's kind of like made out of wicker. Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? Gonna work. Gonna work. But uh. It's, it's from wicker and it's got glass in it and every time we move it another piece falls off of it and it's it's leaned up against the wall and as long as it stays up against the wall it's okay but if you try to hold stand it by itself it's really wobbly so after Jan saw my uh, my clamp rack she goes wow that would be really cool something like that to replace that knickknack rack if it, you know a little rounded little little prettier looking and like yeah okay that, that wouldn't be too bad then when I made that that uh, rack for the uh, for the power tools, she was like, "Oh man!" She was, "If you took that and put a couple angles on it, you'd be you'd be like you'd have it made." And I'm like, "Oh okay." So then we went to Michaels. I think it was Michaels. It's one of those that has all the all the furniture and stuff. And they've got uh, and they had two of them that were there that were. That were made up, and then it looked like somebody beat them with a chain. And they looked—they look real bad. It's something that I would—if I saw that in the garbage, I wouldn't pick it up. Well, I might pick it up to take to get the wood off it, but I, I'd never—you know—that that should have been out in the trash. And they wanted a hundred something dollars for it. And, and Dan goes, something like this. I said, you want it to look that crappy? I said, you can have one of my one of my things out of the shop. Said, well, no, I want it to look nice. You know, and it's like, okay. So now I got a general idea of what I need to do for that. And then, oh, this is great. We saw, I think it was on the internet. Yeah, I think it was on the internet. Somebody had made, and they were selling, a bed. 
and this bed had paint peeling off of it and half the paint was missing and it was white and there was no wood showing but it was like primer and all that other stuff and it looked like crap you know in my day when I was a kid my dad would turn around and say we gotta sand that down and repaint it you know he wouldn't allow that he'd throw it away and it was for sale for fourteen hundred dollars for just a bed well, no no you know just a just a frame and a, the headboard and, and that it's like holy buckets I've thrown away stuff that looked better than that jeez If you want that antique look, go to an antique store. Recycle. Okay, I'll get off my... Oh, wait a minute. I don't have a soapbox. But I got this. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. How's that? I may have to make a soapbox just for just for those days. Or not. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's a good thing that that well if that idea went with went with vehicles, boy my truck will be will be worth a bundle. With all the scratches and beat up and bent bumper and everything else on it. This is that old door, this bottom piece. I should have left it alone. It wasn't looking too bad. I just got had little chips in the back and stuff. But it's a harder wood. I need to slow down to, to stand it. Oh man. Okay, here this is a real good thing to show about standing. Let me show this end. Finish this up. I have a piece of this left. And maybe I'll do a little demonstration about standing once I find where all my sandpaper is. It's packed somewhere. And this, this, this same thing that you're going to see now, it, it shows up on, it's on, it'll be on regular wood too, but you don't see it as badly. Okay. See the scratch marks? I don't know if you can see that. I got to check and see. Yeah, okay. There's scratch marks in here. And that's left by the paper being very coarse. This was wore out. So what happens is, is how sanding works, is you take the coarse stuff and that brings out, that takes off the old finish and does anything, whatever it's going to do. Brings down and makes everything flat. That does all the work. The subsequent sanding that you're doing is there to bring these scratch marks out so they don't show up when you're putting something, you know, on you're putting like a, a finish or something on it. And... That's why you usually, you end up with the coarse one, you're spending a lot of time with that because that's where you're doing your sculpting and your, your fitting and everything else like that. And then your subsequent sandings <laughs> are not to really to, to remove, you're going to be removing wood, but you're, you're only removing and you're bringing down so that the scratch marks are, are being leveled out. And what happens is, is once you do it with one grit, you're going to leave a finer scratch mark. 
the next grit you come down and put it in there, you're going to leave another final scratch mark. Until you get to like 600 grit, you're still leaving scratch marks, but they're so fine that they're not noticeable. Whereas now, and you're going to see it when I when I do it, because I'm not I'm not going to go crazy with this. But you will see when you put a tint down on this, the scratch marks will show up. Uh, and it's more so prevalent when you're using like a lacquer or a shellac or something like that. So, the smoothness, which is it's a benefit of doing this, is like a secondary thing actually, because what you're doing is you're um, you're actually just trying to get the the visual portion of it, so that when you look at it, you're not going to see all the all the imperfections in the standing. Oh yeah, it is making a big difference. Fresh piece of sandpaper, holy cow! And another thing is, is, this one here is directional, so the scratch marks are real prevalent. <coughs> if you go over this subsequently with a random orbit sander, most of the uh, most of the scratch marks ended up being kind of swirly, and they're they're easier. They're easier to take down, and since it's such a random pattern, they don't show up as much to the eye. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes you can get away with standing with a, uh, you can quit at like a coarser grit, like 220 or 240 or something like that. Because when you get down to like 220, it, it's smooth to the to the feel, and with the right sander, the the grit pattern or scratch pattern, whatever they want to call it, is not noticeable to the eye. And that's the bad part. You will, you a lot of times you won't notice it until you put something on it. You either wet it, or you know you put like, like you put the oil, put an oil on it or something, and that'll, that'll bring it back. And you see here, it's pretty bad. Also, this is veneering. It's a very thin veneer, and I'm losing a veneer over here. So I got to try to feather that veneer out, because I don't want it to wear. You can put a fingernail up underneath it. This was a solid core door. And it was, uh, it was quite heavy. There are a series, the way a solid core door works, if they don't use one big piece, so that would have a tendency to want to warp. But they use a bunch of square pieces that they put together, they laminate together, and then they cover it with a veneer to get the, you know, whatever kind of finish you want, want on it. Wood, whatever color, wood, and stuff like that. And the veneering is very thin. That's why a lot of times you can you can stand through the veneering and then you, you really wreck the piece. I run into the same problem when I'm using like quarter inch ply, plywood because the veneering on it is so thin you can't can't do much aggressive standing on it. Just a very light coating. 
if I was going to be doing veneering and sanding veneering, I'd probably start at at least 220, maybe more. It's just kind of like a freshen up kind of thing, very light. Places with this too. Oh, it might be a little high. I don't know. Can you see that? It, it seems to fit. It fits a little bit better with the roundedness. I need to get some of the glue off of it. There's some glue streaking. Kind of fit it a little bit more in here. Sculpt it down over here. You know, people have said that making furniture and cabinetry and stuff like that is a type of artistry, and it's like, nah, nah, it's just building and all that. But when you think about all the forming and, and fitting and like this here, the sculpting that's involved to make it fit and make it a continuous piece, yeah, I guess it is art. I never considered it that, but yeah, I guess so. that goes in and just a plain old square square box of course it probably there's a lot more of it being like a curvy box or you know like curves on the end or anything like that I think that making a square piece of furniture is harder than making one that's got like, you know, like a, uh, the Japanese style or <laughs> the one that has like, you know, arcs in it and stuff like that. Because your eye is looking for curvature and so imperfections in the curvature kind of don't get noticed. Whereas when you're looking at a square piece, because it's all straight lines, if there's a slight amount of curvature or something like that in one spot, your eye will be drawn to it. That's one of the reasons, and this is like a little cheat. Doing a round over softens up the, the edges, makes it harder for you to get splinters and stuff like that. But it also plays games with the eye. And helps to hide some of the imperfections that, that may be in it. And it may not be that's a bad cut or that it wasn't square. It may be something as much as 
the the wood absorbed water and swall had swollen in just one place. Next thing you know, your straight line will look like a little hump. Of course, you don't see that usually right away. That's after years that it's been sitting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it should be. I've got a, I've got a mask, but then I can't talk. So I'm. I kind of made the decision that I wear that I talk instead of mask. I need to get one of those RK or RZ or whatever it is. Yeah, I need to get one of those. Timber! When you use a 
scrap pieces and you're building something. You usually end, find that you end up doing a lot more sanding and fitting than if you're using, you know, your box. Everything's all brand new. But on the same token, there are times that when you're using scrap pieces, they've been sitting around in the garage so long or in the shop so long that they've really super stabilized. So once you get them in and fit it up and everything like that, they hold up real well. Whereas if you're using new stuff and it's only been in the shop for maybe a week or so, you know, it's still, it's still getting acclimated. And you can end up with, you know, all kinds of movement and twisting and everything else like that. This is Texas until this this stuff petrifies and turns into into rock. It's going to be a living thing. I've got checking going on in my kiosk. I got one of the doors is starting to warp. That's just because the humidity changes from inside the house to out here and everything else and I feel that thing pretty well it's just the nature of the beast My sister hasn't shown up and started yelling. All right, there it is. I'm back in the green. Well, I'll be doggone. I have no idea what, what caused that. Maybe the internet decided to glitch or something. <coughs> it's funny. I just, I just shut it down and fired it up again, and I'm not dropping frames on anything. I'm running crappy video, but I'm running everything okay. My bit rate is dog slow. So I don't know what the heck's going on here. Let me sit down. <coughs> Get some of my zippy freeze. Get a little bit of zippy fizz or whatever it is. It's wet. It's energetic because stuff. Because of what you have done, this ancient power it's, has yeah, been orange. She's and anything it's anything we've ever faced. It's sugar free, which means whatever they put in it, it takes a monster. It doesn't matter what brand it is. All I have to do is put X wax on the label because all that stuff goes through me. She can't swear about it, so she drinks it every day, like a, it, like a vitamin drink thing. She says it's made her feel healthier and more energetic. 
I don't drink it as often. My stream is open. What do you mean? Looks like it's working. Oh no, it's fine. Hey, hey Mega, how you doing? Uh, no, it's fine, you can watch this. Right now I'm showing off my box, I'm stopping taking a break. Getting off my legs a little bit. And then, uh, we're gonna go back to making noise. It was, a. Uh, it was like a major thing here because of the stream died. Yeah, as the day goes on, I take more of them, especially as it gets hotter. I don't know what temperature it is, but it's, it's pretty. It's pretty warm. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that stream. They got me down to 350. 300. 50 or 360 uh, bits on a on a bit rate. It is, huh? Boy, send some this way to Texas, will you? The only thing that's saving me now is the fact that the sun is isn't hitting the hitting the shop yet. When the sun hits the roof of the shop, this place turns into a sauna. Oh, is that nice? That's real nice. I think we're in the 80s or 90s. I gotta check my phone. Let's see. Yeah, you know, if I... If I owned this place, I'd have put AC in it, but... Uh... I'm renting, and the guy doesn't want me to do any kind of major overhaul. But yeah, if I was living here, if I owned this place, it would be, it would definitely be central air. I wouldn't be playing. Call you Matt. Meg? I gotta take and see. Hey, I got you, Meg. No problem. Sorry about that. I, uh... change that in my computer so that's why uh, it'll come up when you come in it'll say it's Meg uh, while I'm sitting here I'm doing some phone check and I got I got a couple of messages So, I'm sitting here and I'm staring at that, uh, that case. Oh, yeah? Hurt, huh? That's scary. I've had stuff come at me when I was wearing safety glasses and see it, seeing it coming at you that fast. I mean, you, you, you naturally will close your eyes. But when it comes at you and then hits you, man, that scared the hell out of you. got to you got to 
you get around anything moving and spinning like that, you gotta. Just like here, I wear safety shades. So, so Meg, you uh, you turn wood, or what? I, I'm not familiar. That's why I copy and paste his name. Yeah, me too. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. Yeah, all those underscores, man. I, I, I kind of like trip over them. But he's a good guy. He definitely deserves to have all those underscores. And a few extra. Oh, man. Oh, hey. We're going to do wood turning. Everybody get ready for this. Wood turning. How's that? Does that count? I'll just go back over here to my standing. Yeah, I figured, well... You and I kind of think alike on stuff, so. It must be those European jeans. Get down low, it's a rough on the armpit. I think I need to be taller. I'm just trying to get the Get all the birds and stuff off so this way you're not getting getting scratched up or catching a, a sliver. Well, I heard a what? I am making a cabinet that's going to be a stand for my planer. Uh, right now... Okay, don't get dizzy. Right now, my planer is sitting on a... on this stand here, which is lower. And this cabinet actually is supposed to be... is, is underneath... goes underneath my table saw and holds all my table saw stuff. Man, I gotta vacuum that out. Thanks. Yeah, it's a it's a two car garage. I uh when we rented this place and we moved here, 
we moved from an apartment. And I told my most beautiful and loving wife that she can have the whole house if she wants. But I want, I got Dibby's on the garage and some of the computer room. And it worked out pretty good. We still, you know, she still gets, uh, I'm slowly moving in at a few other places. Uh oh. Did I kill this camera? Oh, okay. I'm thinking with the wrong camera. Okay, here's that one. I thought so. Good. What about this one? Hi. <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I got... We lived in an apartment for about 10 years. That's the first time in a long time that I didn't have a shop of some kind. And boy, I went crazy. I did a lot of fishing. Now, I can't be out in the sun fishing. Oh, yeah. That's because, you, you see the cracks? The cracks are raised up on, they're not even, you know, they're like raised up a little bit. Just crappy plywood. And if you don't get that down close to smooth, what's going to happen is you come across like this and you'll catch it with a nail or something and you'll pick a sliver up. Or it'll even just run across the side. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I I hated being in the house or in the apartment. But I got to spend a lot of time fishing, so that was okay. Like I said, now I can't fish. Well, I hope I get feeling better enough that I can't, that I can handle the heat a little better and go and do fishing, because I sure miss it. But. Uh, I had to do something, I gotta keep active, you know? And I told Jen, that's, that's my most beautiful and loving wife, by the way. And she, uh, you know, she was real supportive. Because otherwise I'd be vegetating in front of the computer. And, I don't want to, Neither of us wanted me to be doing that. And then I started doing YouTube videos. And boy, I'll tell you what, she was real supportive of that too. It's like, yeah, do it. We, you know, we bought the cameras and set up and stuff. And then it kind of just went to streaming. She liked that screaming so much that heck, she's screaming now. She does jewelry, and she's a painter in the house. I've got pictures someplace where I was painting something, and there was as much paint on me as it was on the on the cabinet. I kind of get into my work, I guess. So. A lot of this stuff, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna have it painted, I'll get it all ready to go, and then she'll come over here and she'll actually put slap it on. And she got out here. We did a stream on a Saturday a couple weeks ago. <laughs> She's real. She likes doing doing crafts and stuff like that, and and the woodworking idea. She always liked the idea of it. But I don't, she never got a chance to do much of it. So, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link up. Matter of fact, this is 
kick up somewhere. I got it in the box. The colors oh, of summer let me see. perfectly. There's the yellow of the rising day, the orange of a heat ripened afternoon, and the blue of long, cool nights. These are the colors of summer in one perfect summer ale. Sam Adams, Boston. So you're company, are you a, you're a red fisherman, fisher person, Meg? I think this is it. Let me check. That's it. Oh, cool. Yeah, I do a lot of pier fishing. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riggy. Uh, yeah, I, uh... I did a lot more offshore fishing when I was living in Florida. Whereas in uh, over here I do a lot of pier fishing, some shore fishing. I'm timing you. anything important. I still have to stop and check chat because it's the thing. Oh, you cutting grass? Lucky you. Oh, Meg, you gotta get goofy in the shop. That's how you do things. You make mistakes, you go, oops. You know. I think Kraft has got me on auto, auto uh, host, and I think that that's her doing it. Wow, I've been on, oh, it don't tell me, because I don't have the command. I'm running at 355 KBS. Do you believe that? That's like nothing. And, but I haven't dropped any frames since we've restarted, so I don't know what's going on. Maybe they put me to a different server. I don't know. Pretty good. How are you doing, Mr. K Dow? Ooh. Smooth. Well, okay, not as a baby's behind, but 
smoother than my behind. That looks pretty good. I like the little the little roundedness I put on here. It's not that sharpness over here is come pay. Yeah, no kidding. I said that a few many times. pretty dry. I'm really surprised. I figured it'd have a damp feel to it. Especially with it, the way it's been raining and everything. Maybe it'll be thirsty and it'll soak up a lot of stain. It should help seal the pores up so then it won't absorb as, as much moisture. Music isn't too bad. For what the a little bit that I can hear. slight mark that the router made and this here is taking that mark off so it's leaving a nice a nice looking finish on it of course it'll still have the sandpaper scratches oh, there's some glue we'll do that yeah yeah that's tonight right that's tonight at Iggy time. Yeah, that, that's what happened here. And all the neighbors hit it. All the neighbors got theirs. I didn't get mine. I got ready to go out and do it and it started raining again. And it's funny. Oh, it's so funny. I put on... I turn around and our front, the front of our house floods. 
not the house part, but the street. And it'll drain after it quits raining. But it... Okay, I'll be there. That's 6 p.m. Jimmy time. That's what I said, but I end up I end up doing it. It's a good thing, because when I got done mowing, about 30 minutes or so afterwards, it started. It dumped. It was pouring like crazy over here. Uh, anyway, so I turned around and I and I took a video of the water. Yeah, yeah. See, I told you, 6 p.m. Jimmy time. But uh, it there was water all along the front, so I took a picture of it you know and it looked like a little river and the first the first thing that was uh was posted i put oh and i put it up on my facebook account i uh, probably the first posting i've done in months and uh the first comment was boy look how green your grass is and it's like it's weeds what do you want and like the first six nobody nobody even mentioned or noticed or said anything about the water and the flooding and the, the fact that there was a foot and a half deep or anything like that they were all worried about how green my grass was jeez you know I could care less as long as it's not weeds and it's not it's not tall enough that it's hiding snakes and I don't really care about snakes as long as they don't bite you. And I've had, you know, I've, I've killed three or four of them over here already. But, uh, you know, I I don't care what the grass looks like. I'll mow it. I care more about how my, uh, uh, how my, uh, my catnip patch is doing. <laughs> We've got this cat. I don't see him. If I, if I could have seen him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's what's the deal with that? He's just razzing his old heat. He don't mean nothing by it. Sometimes, uh... No, I'm allergic to cats. Well, yeah, I got cats, but they're all outside. Uh... I like cats. I mean, I'm not... I don't dislike them, but I'm, I am so deathly allergic, I can't have them. And poor Jan, she likes cats, and she can't have one. Eat, you know, we can't have a cat. So uh, outside, I, I take care of them. I don't feed them. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah, yeah, the ones that are outside. And when I was in Florida, I used to, the next door neighbor used to feed them. But I used to water them. And they used to get, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, the best kind. And they used to get, they used to come around and hang around when I was cleaning fish. Because they'd always get, get, get fish. But they they walk around here like they own a the joint. So, there's this one, uh, I don't know how to, how to describe it, because I don't, I don't know all the cat terms. But there's this one cat, and what, what he does, is he'll come walking around the house, and just strutting along. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This way they grow better. And they stay clean. Yeah, right. But no, we used to, I used to put water out for them. Uh, and there are a couple of stray dogs that I used to put water out for. Well, you know, I put a big water trough out there and keep the mosquitoes out of it. And with it being hot, it's hot like it here in Texas. There are a lot of animals you stop up, stop up and get water. Oops, sorry. But, uh, so anyway, I, I've always, I'm kidding, I said, I'm, I'm going to be the, the neighborhood dope dealer for the cats. So I, I planted, I might as well just go ahead and go to the kiosk here. So I went ahead and I planted uh, some of this, it's like a rye grass or something that cats are supposed to like. And I got it like right on a corner by the house. Uh, we're on a corner and the house goes like this and it's right there. Yeah, yeah, and and then I got, I got, I only got one plant, 
I've only got one plan of uh, catnip. But it's really cool. They haven't chewed it up. It's just growing. Yeah, you're old. But it, it's growing. So, they're not tearing it up or nothing. But they'll turn around and they get stuck up in that corner. And they'll walk around over here like they own the joint. And this one will get underneath my, my truck in the shade. And it'll crash. It's like he's stoned. You know, it's like... And he passes out. And he sleeps. I walked up to him one day. I walked up next to him. And he's snoring. What's this? It's like, what the heck? Anyway. So yeah, that's my that's that's my big animal story. Yeah, yeah, it, it's really cool. And and so it's like I'm the I I, I guess I'm the no, the neighborhood dealer now. Cause there's like there's like four or five of them. Next door neighbors got they own, they have two cats that they bring in the house in the evening, but they let run around during the day. And there's this one black cat. Real pretty cat. Boy, I tell you, that's a... And, and it's healthy. You can tell he's, he's well taken care of. He or she or whatever. <laughs> well, we have a friend of ours. Well, it's a friend of Jan, uh, Jan's. She used to be a, a driver for Jan. I've done some computer work for her. And, yeah, anyway, stuff like that. And, uh... That black cat come come, turn, come around, around the corner. And this woman... We're sitting outside here. And this woman freaked. It's like... No, you can't have a black cat. I can't have a black cat cross my way. No, no, no. And she, you know, she just went bananas. I thought she was gonna go to go in the truck and get a gun and shoot that poor cat. Your dogs have a cat? That's cool. I don't. You know, I I, I don't I don't dislike cats. I probably would like them, uh, and if I wasn't allergic to them, I probably would have one. Because if not now, animals make great stories, and it's always great to have stories when you're streaming, you know. And it's like, you know, it's like, hey, look what my stupid man animal did. So, but uh, I can't. So that kind of cuts down on my in my my streaming material. I was never allergic to, to cats. Yeah, I'm a big dog guy too. We've got lots of Alpos. And they're little dogs. They're Dan. And uh, living in an apartment, when we were living in an apartment, you couldn't have a big dog. I had... I had a uh, Samoyed up north in Chicago. And that's when I got into interested in training dogs. And boy, I'll tell you what, that Samoyed, was a, he was hard to train. He was a good subject to learn. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very partial to Shepherd. My next dog... My mom, my mom ended up kidnapping my dog Kilo, the Samoyed, and uh, he ended up, he ended up, wouldn't, you know, he, he ended up living over there with my parents. And it was really funny because my mom was sickly, and Kilo has been up there in age too, you know, and I just mentioned. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta let them know what what you want them to do, and you gotta turn around and cut your deal. But anyway, so he was getting up there in age, and I was trying to uh, prep her for you know having to put him to sleep and stuff. And she turned around and she says, "That dog is gonna outlive me." That's what she said. 
<laughs> and you know what? We ended up putting Kilo to sleep a week after my mom died. He just, he just, he just like, that was done. He's done. Put a carpet down. Then we had Bree. Bree was a Shepherd Star payment. And uh, she was a great dog. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me see that. Are you telling me that uh, K-Dog's not housebroken? Oh, wow. My buddy had a dog named Trouble. Boy, this is some junky plywood. I think I need some wheel chocks. Sliver. Sliver time. Yeah, let's cut this down. Okay, well. Don't run. You might trip and fall. See you later. You never know. You might get done in a hurry and be able to come back. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate you visiting. Right out of the seat, plywood, too. They just don't make it like they used to anymore. Oh, you know what? Oh, this one's had it. No, I still got some there. What the heck is this stuff on it?
Maybe I can chip the garbage off here. Probably not. I don't know what that is stuck on there. Maybe a glue from the plywood. Who knows? Because it quit sanding, all it's doing is riding on top of that glue. Ah, I chipped it off. Okay, that's it. Too bad, too. That's a nice piece of sandpaper. Let me show you something here. This piece of sandpaper. Oh, okay. That's the wrong one. Okay, there we go. Maybe that'd be a little bit better. This piece of sandpaper is, you know, it's a fuzzy back, Velcro back. This is actually come in a strip that's about that wide in a big roll. It came from that clean spore. Uh, I think I got the link in there. And all I did was take and, and draw it and then just cut them out. And I've got, I've got bags and bags and bags of, of sandpaper. And it works good. It's really good stuff. Let me see. What? Oh, that's shout. Ah! I got it in Iggy's that I don't have it on mine. I thought I put it in there. But, uh, yeah, so it works good. It, it takes a little time to cut them. But for what they cost... Even with the, even with the, uh, uh, with my labor, the cost of my labor doing this, which is probably what about a nickel an hour now, it uh, it ends up being cheaper to do it this way than it is to buy the stuff in the package. And it, it's a good way on, when it's really hot out here and I can't I can't work out here, I just go into Jan's craft into the crafts room. I call it Jan's craft room, but it's not that's not the case. And. Uh, I do the, <coughs> I'll cut them out. And I go through, I go through them a little bit more often than I did when I was buying them just because if they're not cutting good, I get rid of them. Nice thing about 60 grit, they don't, they don't seem to fill up as bad normally. But for some reason over here there's glue or something on it. The glue that's in, that's used that's on this on this stuff is pretty bad. I've got this epoxy coating. That I was going to use for uh, you know like a, a you know a nicer project or something like that, but I'm thinking that maybe I ought to try it on these on this backside and pour it on there and kind of seal it. I don't know yet. I, I'm still thinking about that. I got a long time long time before I'm going to have to actually do that. I don't know. I think I need some wheel socks.
I think I need some wheel chucks here. Not like I don't have any. With these little wheels, it doesn't take much to keep them rolling. There we go. Ta-da! Oh yeah, sure. Hey, stop and squat. But yet, if it's on the floor, and I, and I hit a hit sawdust, it quit running. What up with that? What up with that? I need something a little bit more, a little solider than just. Nah. Only for a stop. It ain't like I'm going to be fondling it or anything. Sun's gotten past the pecan tree in the back. I think it's just starting to, to cook the shop. I need to put a, get a thermostat in here. A thermostat. A thermometer. A thermometer. Yeah, a thermostat. Just so I can turn the sun down when it gets too hot in here. Oh, what a concept. that this was that uneven and, and flaky and crappy until I started to sand it or fondle it with my sander or whatever you want to call it. I've been 
thinking about that computer case thing, and I, I don't know if, I, if I've got the stuff to do that. For the accuracy to cut the stuff that need to be done for the back, you know, like for the feet, for the card reader, for the, you know, card slots and everything, it almost, something like that needs need to be done with a CNC machine. So we would need somebody that does CN, that's, that's got a CNC machine and good with that kind of stuff to do it. That is a concept. I think about it from time to time. I was thinking about making a different case for my, uh, for the machine that's in the kiosk. Make it more like a test bench. <laughs> so that everything was kind of exposed to the air that's flowing through. And then maybe adding a few extra fans to help guide the cooler air from the front end. But I don't know. Blocking. Somebody said something really nice with a lot of stuff. Say, Yak, how are you, man? Haven't seen you in since last night. How you doing? I thought I had that clean sport thing on here. around me about going to the doctor. Oh, really? I had to reset the last time it did it. Uh, let me see. I'm not dropping, I'm not dropping frames. Uh, OBS says that I'm actually transmitting away very happily. Uh... Yeah, it says I'm sending away here. Let me do a quick little check here. Oh, cool. Uh, everything seems to be doing okay. Everything's kind of settled down. I wonder if this is like a morning thing, like the morning dew or something. It gets on it because it seems now Ever since that I reset and ran everything, it's been doing okay. I've got no drop frames or anything. So <laughs> what was happening with you guys most probably was Twitch put me to a different server or something. I don't know how long I've been up. My, uh, this ink bot doesn't give me the up times. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna sit down for a little bit. Get a little, a little stuff out of it. I finished that plate. 
So I finished this. And the only bad part that I got in the whole thing, this all feels pretty good. It's not, it's kind of humpy, but it's smooth. Oh, I got to do this bottom yet. Okay, well, let me finish that before I quit. The only real bad part, part that I have is I mismeasured over here and it's too big a gap. There's a big gap. Which, for the stop, I'm not too worried about. I probably would have cut a piece of quarter round, laid it over the top of this, and then sanded it, and then, you know, kind of like planed it all down so it's smooth, so it ended up being a real little, little dinky thing covering it. If I was covering up a mistake like we're in a house or something. But heck, who knows, that little gap in the back may help it help it out when I'm blowing all the sawdust out of it. Because I don't care what anybody says, sawdust goes everywhere around here. And the other thing is it's the back. I know there are a lot of guys that when they do stuff like this, they don't do nothing to the back. You know. I've seen people not, you know, the back of them doesn't, doesn't have any finish on them or sanding or nothing. I can't do that. Especially out here, especially here in Texas, by the coast. Anything that's ex exposed wood is going to absorb moisture. And then you get that moisture change back and forth to drying. And it stuff warps and crinkles and everything else. So Even if it's just a, a shop piece, it's going to get or something in it to kind of help seal the pores up a little bit if nothing else. I'd have a better chance of survival or this thing would have a better chance of survival. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to take a break. Uh, <coughs> this thing actually, as it is, would have a better chance of survival in the house because the humidity stays closer to consistent than it does here so I don't know well I got all kinds of goodies here I got I stocked up because I plan on being here a while I got coffee this is where I have the problem is, is last time Last time, this this camera here is a new camera. It was originally a C525, which is a a 720p uh, kind of like a fold-up camera, a Logitech. This one here is the exact same camera, except it's the 515, which is it makes it 1080p, and it is running like 250% better. And I think what the problem was was that the software was trying to Hey, how you doing, pimp? How's it going, man? Uh, I think that the software was trying to run it at 1080p and it jacked with it. It cooked it. So I got that one set up on my, on my regular computer it's kind of it's still kind of uh, not the greatest quality but at least it's enough that I can I can do you know like Skype not I don't Skype you know messaging and stuff like that with my sister so it's not like I've thrown it away but it's not it doesn't meet the stream quality criteria
speaking of stream quality, how is the picture quality? Because that, like I said, they, we dumbed this thing down quite a bit. Uh, from what I, yeah, that's what they did. We do, they downscaled it to the lowest resolution for some reason. And, and I'm running at like 500, uh, 500 KBS bitrate, which I normally, until recently, well, all the rain, but on a good day when I'm streaming, I'm running at uh, between 15 and 3,500, depending on, depending on the day. But this past few weeks, it's been really bad. I wonder if my modem is giving me a, a, is a problem. I need to talk to Comcast about it, and, and the scary part is the minute I start talking to them, it ends up, they end up wanting to charge me more money for something. So I don't know. And then we talked about, since we don't do, uh, to get the internet at an affordable right, we had to buy a package. We got VoIP which we don't use, and we don't even have a home phone. We have, they gave us, we got cable, and I don't watch TV. I watch, I watch it all, everything comes through the computer. And the, the important part that we want is the internet. Yeah, you know, and we're, we're getting, we're getting dinked. This thing here, and it's supposed to be, and they, they didn't say anything about upload speed. Everything was based on download. This is supposed to have like a boost and all this stuff, and it's supposed to be at like 200, 200 MPS uh, speed. I haven't been able to, I have yet to get it over 85. Uh, it just, I don't understand it. Paying all this money for all this, just real high-end stuff, and I'm not, we're not getting it. You would think that there would be a law against that. But I guess not. But the internet in this neighborhood is bad. Which is telling me that, I bet you any money that, they, that what they need to do is go out and replace the switch, the switch bank, or repeaters, or whatever it is that they have over here that feeds this neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, isn't that ridiculous? It, and if it, the thing is, if it wasn't so restrictive or so expensive, I would just go, I just go look at a business line. Because what we're paying for this with all the other garbage, if we got a, a, a business internet feed and we could get a synchronous, even at Oh, you know, even at like 100 BPS or 50 BPS, uh, I like 100. And, and it really, see, the thing is, is over here. This is the weird part. There are times that my upload is almost 11 BPS. Uh. And then there are other times that it'll go down to one one and a half BPS. Like right now, I'm probably this is the one and a half BPS time, and I don't understand what's causing it. What's that? I have a people here. There are the people looking at just walked up to my house. Hang on a second. No, I don't know. Wait, I live on a side street. I don't have traffic. I have... This lady just pulled up. Then in that case, I, I gotta give him credit. That's a pretty nice little sales pitch. 
but I don't know. Oh. Okay, I'm a, I'm jumping up over here, and I'm I'm checking. I check the inner. I, I check every once in a while to make sure that my video is running, and it says I'm offline again. Is that true? Am I offline again? I'm hosting somebody. No, I'm online. Okay, that's cool. Phew, I panicked. I'm refreshing, but I think that's on my end because I'm running too much bandwidth on that. Okay, let's, let's minimize this again. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, that's cool. Oh, 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 oh. It says I'm dropping the frames again. I'm dropping to the frame again. What the heck? Hmm. Wow. All of a sudden it started dumping frames. I bet you any money the afternoon crowd is showing up. People are getting out and playing games on lunch. So hey, you know what guys? It's like one o'clock. It's getting warm in here. I do want to finish that that uh, that sanding though. But uh, I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call it a day and uh, shut this down because my this is the internet's jacking with me again and we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and call it a day and I want to thank everybody for showing up over here and visiting and and all that kind of stuff and I will see you on the next stream hopefully it'll be tomorrow if it don't rain Maybe it'll be dried out enough that my ISP will let me go a little bit faster. Anyway, until then, everybody have a great day, and of course, see ya.